Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Opponent, are there then two Brahmans, one superior and the other inferior? Vedantin, quite so, for we come across such texts as, This very Brahman, O Satyakama, that is inferior and superior, is but this Aum. Prashna Upanishad 5.2 Opponent, which again is the superior Brahman and which the inferior? Vedantin. The superior Brahman is spoken of where it is indicated by such terms as not gross, through a negation of all the distinctions of names, forms, etc., called up by nescience. That very Brahman becomes the inferior Brahman where it is taught as possessed of some distinct name, form, etc., for the sake of meditation, as in such words as identified with the mind, having prana, that is, the subtle body, as his body, and effulgence as his form. Chandogya 3, 14, 2. Opponent. In that case, the texts about non-duality will be compromised. Vedanta. Not so. For that objection was met from the point of view of the limiting adjuncts created by name and form, which spring up from nescience. The results accruing from that meditation on the qualified Brahman, mentioned in the relevant contexts and consisting in the divine powers over the world, and so on, as heard of in such texts as, should he be desirous of the world of the mains, the mains come to him at his very will. Chandogya 8.2.1 However, are confined within the transmigratory state itself on account of the continuance of ignorance. Since this result is associated with some particular space, any traveling for its attainment involves no contradiction. Even though the self is omnipresent, we said earlier under the aphorism, on account of its having for its essence the qualities of that intellect, Sutra 2.3.29, that a movement comes to be perceived when the limiting adjuncts like the intellect move just as much as space appears to be moving when vessels, etc., containing it move. Hence, the view that stands well established is, Bhadari thinks that they are led to the conditioned Brahman, etc., Brahma Sutra 437. And the view contained in, Jaimini says that the Supreme Brahman is attained, etc., Sutra 4312, is presented merely as an apparent alternative view by way of helping the student's development of the power of intellect. This is how it is to be understood. Namaste. So at last we get to the conclusion of this Adhikarna. That was a long one, huh? But this is really important because Shankara gives the criteria he establishes the distinction between the unconditioned and conditioned Brahman, the superior and inferior Brahman. Huh? This is vital for self-realization because, as we will see in the next Adhikarana, how one thinks about Brahman is exactly what determines his destination after death. So, this is a very important distinction going into the conclusion of this pada, the third pada, the fourth chapter of Brahma Sutra. What is the difference between superior and inferior Brahman? Well, in one sense, there is no difference. It's like, well, he gives the example of the space inside the pot. Uh, if I have a pot here, and I move it over here, now, did the space inside the pot move? <laughs> That's like, you know, why did the chicken cross the road? 
it's one of those unanswerable questions. Because why? Space doesn't move. Space is the context within which all motion takes place. So space does not possess the attribute of movement. Therefore, to say that the space in the pot moves when I move the pot is just ridiculous. It's impossible. It's inconceivable. It's an invalid question. And the Buddha used to call people out for this all the time, because they would ask things like, does the Tathagata, that is the Buddha, continue to exist after death? It's a meaningless question, because <laughs> the Buddha, the one who is fully realized, doesn't even exist during life. <laughs> his I, his individuality, his upadis, his covering has gone away. So when that goes away, there is no more distinction anymore. There is no more symbology, no more connection between the soul and the body. The body is no longer a symbol for the soul. Well, in the same way, the individual is no longer a symbol for Brahman when he becomes fully self-realized. The example is the ocean and the waves. The waves are nothing but water. They're nothing but the ocean. Yet the waves come and go, and the ocean just remains the same. That's because the change of the waves, the oscillation of the water level, that is a wave, is not one of the properties of the ocean. Just like individuality is not one of the properties of the superior Brahman. So even though we give it a name, uh, the superior Brahman, primary Brahman or whatever, unconditioned Brahman, it really doesn't have what we call individuality. It is not a thing. Huh? The idea of thingness presupposes space, time, individuality, and so on and so on. Duality. Uh, the complete package. So that duality does not superimpose on the qualityless Brahman, the attributeless Brahman, primary Brahman. But when duality is superimposed on Brahman, then it becomes the secondary Brahman, the derivative Brahman. Huh? Another example is when the waves in the ocean break on the shore, they create innumerable little bubbles. Well, what are the bubbles? They're nothing but water. They're none different from the ocean. The only thing is that the ocean does not try to enclose any space, whereas the bubbles do. They have a boundary. Huh? But that boundary is only temporary because as soon as the next wave comes, they're all destroyed. So it's the same way with the individual. As long as the body exists, the individual seems to exist. But actually the individual who realizes Brahman no longer needs a symbol, a body, a name, a form, an identity, an individuality, huh? because his existence has become infinite unbounded. See, you have to experience all these things for yourself. You have to realize these things for yourself. Then you can understand. And at that point, no more words are needed. Because our language is deceiving. The language doesn't really describe what we're trying to talk about here. So the use of symbols in general refers only to the conditioned Brahman, 
the secondary Brahman. And of course, the derivative individuals and personalities and places and things and actions and so on, the objects that are derived from it. So these are known in the Puranic philosophy as Shiva and Shakti. Shiva is the unconditioned Brahman reflected in Maya, the conditioned Brahman. And Shakti is that conditioned Brahman, directly. She is all that apparently exists, but does not have real existence because it's impermanent. It's illusory. So, therefore, she becomes the object of Shiva. Shakti becomes the object of Shiva, yet... Shiva could not exist without her. See, all of this is apparent, as it were. Huh? As long as one perceives something, as long as one thinks that something besides the self exists, then there is duality. Then there are objects. Then there are all the phenomena of the material existence. Duality, in a word. But as soon as one realizes that which is beyond symbols, beyond identity, beyond differences, uh, beyond names and forms, then that is seen as the actual reality because it never changes. The world of names and forms is constantly changing. But Brahman does not have the attribute of change. Why? Because it's transcendental to all differences of space, time, names, forms, objects, etc. We have to think like this over and over again. Run through the exercise of making the discrimination between these two aspects of the one Brahman. Just like the distinction between the waves and the ocean, or the bubbles and the waves, <laughs> the bubbles in the water, or the space in the pot. Huh? If it moves, or even if you perceive it, it's not real. It's only apparent. It's a phenomenon based in time. But, as Yajnavalkya famously said, when to the knower of Brahman, everything has become the self, then what is there to see and through what? What is there to hear and through what? Etc., etc. Until what is there to know and through what? How can one know that through which everything is known? That is the supreme Brahman. That is the self. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.